The hypocrisy started right away, and I was very irritated by this blatant lying. It wasn't just the fact that it was untrue, as I couldn't understand that anyway, being so young at the time. It was the self-important rhetoric and the hypocrisy that had seeped into people. Take my father, for example. Even on returning from prison camp, he told me more than once, no need to be upset with the Soviet regime. It's a fine, benevolent force. Look, it gave me a free education. It healed me from tuberculosis, gave me an apartment. I call that a good government, offering a good standard of living. He was an out-and-out -out communist, a communist out of conviction, and he had nothing to be ashamed of. And yet in 1937 he probably started to understand, when everything had already begun, when all these mass arrests had begun. The biggest fear was knowing that your life could end at any moment. But there was another factor. There were people like me who were almost fearless, people who subconsciously convinced themselves that everything was more or less all right. Yes, there were some tough, terrible things, but they weren't the main things. And this suppression of fear was probably worse than overt fear. Already at the universities, there was a terrible propaganda war being waged against the so-called enemies of the people. This was in 1936 to 1937. There were arrests, major trials, and in our institute, these were not only heeded, they affected a lot of people directly. Sometimes it could happen that a student declared unexpectedly that his parents had been arrested. As a consequence, a meeting of Komsomol activists would be called, during which the said student either had to explain under oath how he had failed to notice his parents' acts of sabotage, or he was made to disavow their actions. My father was arrested, and I instantly became the son of an enemy of the people. Back then, there still were good, sensitive and fearless people who supported me. I cannot complain about having to endure any insults or hardships from my teachers, or especially from my fellow students. My daughter was born in 1933. And you know, they gave us one month off before her birth and one month after. But who was going to take care of the baby after that? Being at work was compulsory. People who lived in the country had no passports. In Stalin's time, all of us were serfs. Studying at the institute, I met young people with radical ideas, and we decided on changing the Russian political order, no less. We founded a Marxist circle on the campus of the Pedagogical Institute, where we would gather to discuss. We would argue until we became hoarse. This was the youth which got fed up with the authorities controlling people's every move and which got tired of the hypocritical work of the communist youth, the Komsomol. Gradually, an adverse view of the existing political system and order of things in the USSR began to take shape. Uh,